which videos are uploaded right now, and we have a Twitter, so follow us on there to keep up to date on our tournaments as we're going to go in here to Grand Finals. Here we are now. Opting to start off at Starterville, um, which honestly I feel like favors Corn a little bit more than Kirby, uh, just because Corn has so much kill power off the sides, you know, with uh, side B and side smash, and already big combos coming out from Mike. Oh, and he gets that inhale. That was so smart. So far, Mike Kirby has gotten so many inhales on John Numbers just on that little platform, uh, like today. Like, it's a definitely a great mix up. He just keeps the numbers on his oh, toes, yeah. hoping, wait, trying to bait out an air dodge or a shield onto yeah. that platform, and then he got an instant command grab. Yeah, a it's lot of people forget that Kirby has that command grab. You know, he's not one of the first characters you think of when you think, like, like usually you think of, like, Ganon or Yoshi or Bowser, and you kind of forget that, yeah, Kirby can absolutely swallow you when you're shielding on a platform above him. Oh my god, the wait! The patience from Numbers, just waiting for Mike Kirby to commit to something. Yeah. Finally go, goes for the knee-jerk reaction kick, and lands that kick, but now we got a little bit of a pressure being applied from Mike, and John just kind of neutralizes the situation. As he waits off stage, got a forward, a great tech from John Numbers that would have spelled his death if he did not push R at the right time. Numbers a big fan of using counter surge on projectiles just because of the little cooldown afterwards. There's actually to, literally no cooldown. Yeah, the to, moment he, that invincibility ends, Corn is able to act again. He's trying to bait out the opponent to like charge in for the counter. Oh, I got the counter, maybe I can punish it, but Mike Kirby's definitely more aware than that. He plays against Corn all the time. See Mike trying to go for the like the little grab after the dragon fang shot. Trying to catch him on the ledge. A great option for Kirby since he's so short, he's able to catch him sitting on the ledge with that claw shot. Yeah. And I just want to quickly point out there, one of the th things that Numbers always says is a problem when you edge guard with Corrin is that all of his her moves send the opponent upward pretty much. And you saw there that uh, he was able to get that neutral air, but it was almost a straight up angle, so he didn't even get the, the option to stage spike. Like, they just like, sent him back on stage, and like Mike was back on stage, it's like, that's fine. Oh, he's gonna go for the sweet spot. Can he punish it? No! Oh wait! Oh, that uppy is not gonna quite do it, but that was certainly close. Now, the reason that John That's Numbers it. taunted there, the reason he did that is because he knew that the crowd was gonna chant for him. He like the thing, no, I'm serious. John Numbers knows when a counter happens, and now we are dancing off to this claw shot counter surge dance. Coming in hot as Mike Kirby is trying to just <laughs> stay on that counter surge. John Numbers eventually gives up, just runs in, goes for the stab, gets the kick. We go to a one stock match to kill Sage's hands. That is was, just covering his face. That was one of the stupidest mind games I've ever seen. Crewmates <laughs> playing each other in grand finals. My God, word. What are you doing, Numbers? Like, just down airing the same yeah. platform three times? Someone please clip that and just put that on Twitter right now just so people can see the nonsense that's happening right here at Xeno 34 in New York City, Manhattan. It's the EMZ play of the week. <laughs> we got that back air. Trying to, oh, here we go. We got some action coming out like from Mike. That. He's got John Numbers off stage, definitely trying to apply a little bit of pressure. He got the that tr back air. And there's another back air. And I don't think Numbers has a jump. He's definitely in a bad situation. Bad. Mike is going for the oh. stone. If he just started it a little bit earlier, he could have caught him. But he just did too much startup on the stone, so he wasn't able to catch him just in time. And John Numbers quickly gets back onto the platform. Oh, the, sure. the edge, I'm sorry. Yes. And uh, one of the big things that Corn does have in this matchup is the juggles on Kirby. Uh, we haven't really seen Numbers be able to exploit it to its fullest, but um, it's certainly... Uh, My Kirby. Once again, recovering a little bit too low. You know he's definitely feeling it in his face. He just recovered a little bit too too to, low with that final cutter. To, to take some levity after that SD, we are going to watch this amazing fight. <laughs> Did you see Mike get baited, though? I could watch that. Did you that see Mike get baited, though? I was dying. He shot the man and just kept counter-surging over and over until he finally just jumped over and caught him with that side B. Mike Kirby got so baited into John Numbers' own ploy. As Mike Kirby takes it back to Smashville. All right, yeah, I can, I can definitely see it. Um, so now we, oh my God, please, please, guys. All right, there we go. Big combos immediately. This is exactly what Mike's looking for. He's going to try and get that down air into the footstool, but John yeah. Numbers gets out of the situation, DIing away from Mike, so he doesn't get caught by it. Now we got a lot of edge guard action coming from John, not allowing Mike to do anything. He's out of jumps. Oh. But just makes it back. I think John thought that maybe he was dead and didn't want to go over the side B that time. Yeah. Not sure, but it doesn't That's matter. He's still always check. You always double check. Never never assume that anyone's dead in a game where everybody has magnet hands that extend three times past their body. 
He's definitely just establishing so much control and dominance here as he just like t takes Mike Kirby for a ride. Sitting at 90%, numbers not letting Mike get back onto the stage, covering all options with that side B, stabbing the edge, kicking to the left. Mike Kirby not running, running out of ideas on how to get back to this stage and he desperately just tries to go for that final cutter. All right, but let's see this Ooh, big combos right now. Oh, but the aggressive option to get back from John Numbers will definitely uh, put the pressure back onto Mike Kirby. And of course, at this point, Mike is at kill percent and Numbers is not. He can sort of go for somewhat riskier options just because he has the ability to right now. Like, we're probably going to see a lot of side Bs as soon as he gets back to stage. Which, is he going to be able to do? Oh. Oh. Oh my god, again, knocking him off stage. Mike trying to catch him with that down air. I'm curious if he doesn't want to, go, to try to go for the stones. It's mad safe. If you use stone, he's up B. He can't like do anything against him. But I'm sure Mike just doesn't want to risk it. Yeah, because... Oh, that's it. Smash on platform. No. Not going to be it. No, he doesn't have enough rage. Not enough percent. As Mike tries to go for that trump. And Mike uh, John sees it coming, so he just jumps off the edge. Back air will seal it, though. Mm. Mike Kirby, a big fan of that back air from Kirby. Oh yeah, I think literally four out of five stocks he's taken today have been from that back air. We got this Ooh. up tilt coming in. Oh my he starts God. to rack up heavy damage. damage. Already from one up tilt, he racks up 34 damage pretty easily as he t juggles John Numbers into the air. Numbers and just trying to wait for Mike to jump above so he gets caught by that down air, but Mike just kind of keeps baiting it out, chilling underneath the platform instead. <laughs> uh, okay. I, I'm, I'd be curious to see if uh, Mike Kirby would opt to go for that uh, command grab while Numbers is on the platform because Numbers has been retreating onto that Smashville platform a lot. Um, and at the very least, reintroducing that, um, that command grab could put some pressure on Numbers to get back down to the ground. Uh, ooh, goes for the grab release? Is this... Ah, oh, man. Gets hit by Corrin's upbeat, and that's not going to do it quite yet. But Kirby is definitely now at kill percent. Side B at the ledge, forward smash at the ledge. There it is. Never mind. I'm an idiot. <laughs> As we see Mike, you know, just trying to get back onto the stage. John just keeps catching this man. Great pivot grab. He's going to go for the turn into a dragon up through this man. Resetting the bracket against Mike as he's got a little wow. bit of a smirk up there. Already his bracket reset. That's right. Yeah, John Numbers has a smirk on him. And Mike's definitely just trying to feel like, you know what? I just lost grand finals. We're going on the true finals now. This is still best two of three for those at home. Survival. Mike still has the ability to go start off with a fresh new set. Their set count now is 1 1 today. So it's whoever wins this next set is the one that'll take home Zeno 34. Going straight right. back to Smashville. So I'm curious why Mike Kirby doesn't want to opt to go try, you know, try out Meta Knight. See what happens. He probably feels just mad comfortable with Kirby. That must be what the oh, solution yeah. is. I can definitely see it. Now it's actually very interesting that um Mike decided to opt for a down throw at very low percents. I think the reason he decided to go for that was because that put Corrin at the magic percent for the next grab to be a very meaty follow-up. I'm pretty sure like the first throw did like 10%, and then the next time he got the grab, he was able to rack up another like 30 or 40. And we see right now Mike Kirby with a slight lead, but of course, respective kill power for both of these characters means that Kirby has to work a lot harder to seal these stocks. Now see Mike trying to get some edge guard action against numbers. Numbers kind of covers a little bit low. Had, definitely catches that ledge jump, hits him with that neutral air as he's just trying to once again jump up here, get some more action going as numbers hits him up to the above. Oh my god, I can't believe that side be missed. <laughs> See Mike, you know, just trying to get some edge guard action going on here. Mike's definitely off stage. He's struggling as Numbers starts to maintain this advantage. He's gonna hold on to it as much as he can as he waits for the option from Mike Kirby to get back onto the stage. He's gonna chill on that platform instead. I like the use of shooting that Dragon Fang shot, trying to cover Mike's options up to the front. As Mike tries to approach in, baits out that forward smash, but isn't able to pun get that punish. They're definitely getting in each other's faces here, trying to get this kill. As they're, play, they're playing in such high pressure situations. Yeah, and I just want to point out something that every time Corrin side bees and Kirby has had the sh is has like you no know, shield it, but they're in that situation that sort of like you know Western Old West showdown. Mike Kirby is <laughs> that man was squished. That was untackable. He was squished. That was untackable. That's what it looks like when you freeze on an untackable. 
Like Kirby, like he was just thinking about everything that he did wrong today. No, he, he wasn't thinking anything because the blood was being squeezed out of his brain. Oh, that's it. Yeah, we got that immaculate punish coming from Mike. Yeah. As Jenner just kind of flubs that up B recovery, trying to auto snap or just recover a little bit low, and he just goes up too high. Mike sees the opportunity, not not one to miss up, flub up a uh, punish. And I just guess, seals out that first stock. Yeah, I, the thing I was going to point out before is that you notice Mike Kirby angling his shield up a lot, especially when numbers will get a side B and he manages to shield it. Ooh, okay. Uh, there it is, the command grab again, and now are we going to see another counter surge situation? Um, anyway, but uh, I was going to say that uh, it's really smart of Mike Kirby to be angling that shield upwards because that means that he's able to hold shield for a longer amount of time to possibly bait out an action from numbers. Okay. Back to the smash. Oh, that was such a good read, but he managed to smash DI out of it, avoiding a really hard punish. Oh, that's it. It's definitely a risky uh, option okay. for a corn to go for that. Because like they are able to DI out of it if they don't see it coming. If they see it coming. And Mike Kirby wanted like, you know, he got caught, he's like, I'm gonna get out of this, because if that forward smash were to connect it, that would have been his uh, sock, and that would have been the first game of true finals here. Oh yeah. Is he might trying to bait out, like he's uh, expecting John Numbers to go off stage and go for like a side B, so he's definitely using those air dodges on the bottom of the stage, but it doesn't matter. John Numbers gets the side B kill. This is the third game in a row he has taken against Mike. Yeah. He's just one game away from taking home this tournament. I wonder if that forward smash was an input error, because forward smash wouldn't have even uh, taken the stock at that point. I think maybe, I don't know, Mike was opting to go for maybe like a perfect pivot up tilt or something like that. It could have been an input error. It could have been like he was just really feeling the forward smash. He just thought that he was going to be right there. And But regardless, John's carrying this home. If he wins one more game, man, like, Mike's yeah. struggling here. He, sent him, he managed to send him to the losers. Once he gets to the grand finals, you know, things start to change. So there's like winner's, winner's side pressure, you know? Yeah. He definitely wants to go to Omega Halberd. He accidentally picked uh, the orbital stage assault or whatever the heck <laughs> the stage is called. But, uh, yeah... Mike, big fan of going to Omega Halberd. I mean, one thing about Halberd is it could possibly mess up Corrin's recovery. It's much more likely to mess up Corrin's recovery than Kirby's. He just likes the stage. He picks his day against anyone. He, he, it's a Kirby stage. He plays some of its favorite songs. He likes the background. If he plays Red Kirby, he's able to blend into the background just a, <laughs> ever so slightly. And we got the boss theme rush playing already as they're both just trying to wait for the other person to commit to the first move as Mike tries to run in, tries to bait out an attack from numbers, Ooh. throwing out that shield as we get a little bit of damage racking up here. Oh my god, it's such a good up tilt. Kirby's up tilt, by the way, his leg is intangible when he does it. Uh, which is why he was able to throw it out there, and I believe he beat out the beginning of Corrin's neutral air. Uh, let's see if he can finish up with this edge guard. No, numbers had a, like very good patience there on the ledge, waited for Mike Kirby to throw out that neutral air, which he's been doing a lot of to cover John's options. And so just being aware of that, he just waited a second and then did get him attacked in order to punish. Uh, but it seems like Mike has been able to make some good adjustments, and he has a pretty healthy lead of about 41%. But he needs to make sure he can maintain that and end up netting it into a kill. Otherwise, it's all for naught. And there it is. That was Excellent. such a great down air coming from Mike. He's starting to play a little bit on fire. That was such a great first stock coming from Mike as he runs in there, directs him all the damage that he needs to do. And I like the ability that he keeps beating out all these attacks from John. And John just kind of flabbergasted here, that attack get, get catching him. He's just playing on fire with all on point so hard with all these punishes. Look at him. He's just inhaling him. All the stage pressure is just amazing coming from Mike Kirby. Hi. Numbers finally gets a catches a break. He establishes a little bit of stage control here, but Mike just keeps coming, throwing out all these attacks. I've never seen such an aggressive Mike in my life. Yeah, I mean it's working out. I wonder if that's sort of the anti, maybe not anti numbers, but anti numbers core. The thing is, he's just getting read after read. He's just inside of numbers' head. His numbers just can't find, seem to find an answer against him this game. Oh my god, that was, that was such a good back air! That, that was so brave of Mike and to go for that catch him with the catch. Hits him with the back air. We got a two stock coming from Mike as he plays out of his mind this last game. We're going into game three, final game of today's tournament as John Numbers yeah. has the counter pick floor. Um, what do you think you're gonna, we're going to see? Battlefield, possibly? Maybe Dreamland? He's probably going to go to Battlefield. Yeah. Using With Korn. Battlefield or Town there, and City? There are bands, right? One band. Or Smashville. 
Not Dreamland. He's yeah. definitely feeling Dreamland. He's making sure that the correct music is playing here. We got Planet Popstar, Ice Cream Island. Who turned off Fountain of Dreams? He literally just did nothing. Who turned off Fountain of Dreams? Really? Really? We're gonna we're gonna do World to Win. Okay, Planet Popstar. That's okay. I like that stage. Planet Pop Star is a pretty great song coming from Kirby's Dreamland 64. It just fits the mood of the final game here with a Kirby main in Grand Finals. Nah, you always got it. You always got to do Fountain of Dreams. I from as I come from Melee. You've always got to do Fountain of Dreams. That, I think that's the reason why that stage is legal because they love the music. There. Anyway, uh, ooh, good up tilts already, and a grab coming out of it. Oh my He's god, and numbers trying to go for the footstool, but the numbers reverse footstools him and kind of flubs up that edge guard. So Mike Kirby gets back onto the stage. You see numbers once again catching these up airs, trying to send Mike yeah. off stage. He's trying desperately to get back onto the stage. Mike just trying to land on the ground. One thing that Mike Kirby is so good at is immediately when he starts off the game, he starts off with his optimal combo starters. It's actually amazing to me that he always, like almost every single game you see him start, he opens with like an up tilt or a grab. Like he never like, it's, it's like he know when he knows exactly what he needs to do, he just gets that option. Uh, anyway, so moving on to this match right now, we see numbers sort of running through Mike Kirby at the moment. Mike hasn't really been able to gain valuable stage control in a while. We now see them sort of come back to neutral here. And ooh, what a great tomahawk grab, sending Kirby off to the sides. And let's see if numbers can continue putting this pressure and he's smashed the ice down. Ex amazing, that might have killed had, he not, had uh, Mike Kirby not been able to uh, get that. I definitely would have killed as you know, he sends him it. off. Doesn't matter, he catches him that side B, kicks him off the stage, he gets that stage to the horizontal okay. death. Mike Kirby on his tournament stock is he's gonna try to get something going against numbers off stage. Trying to rack up that damage if he gets caught clipped by that up B, re-establishing stage control in numbers' favor. Oh yeah. And you can see these juggles starting to come out, and that's the last thing you want to have happen to you as Kirby. Oof. Okay, okay, but good up tilt into up air. Numbers trapped on these platforms. All right, yeah, at this point, Mike Kirby is not going to go for damage. He's going to go for getting numbers off stage and possibly getting some type of edge guard that would even this up a little bit because he still has a mountain to climb in terms of he still has to take numbers stock and he's already incurred 61%, which is kind of awful. <laughs> uh, okay, no, he's just using it to recover low. Okay, great Nair. Keeping numbers off stage. Is he gonna get some type of edge guard again? The weakest hit of Nair. Oh, he went for a, um, a hard read on that for that back air and didn't quite get it. And at this point, yeah, Mike's gonna have to win neutral again in a, such a way that can net him the stock. Notice that numbers are staying on these platforms because you know that up throw is bad news at this point. He also has a stock lead with a pretty comfortable percentage on Mike Kirby, so he's trying to force him to yeah. approach, trying to bait him away to get away from the movement. But the second he gets the Mike Kirby off stage, he's obviously going to run back down there. Oh, that's and that's it. exactly what Mike has been going for the whole time that John has been running away from. Gets caught by it, and now uh, John's on his last stock. That was probably an input flub there. Or maybe, I'm not sure. Or it, maybe, does, it doesn't matter. Maybe that was like the ne next level meta taunting. Using your up B when you're invincible. Regardless of what it is, these guys are playing a dash dance game here. My numbers is going to still on that platform. He is content to try to go for an edge guys. He tries to approach Mike. I'm not sure why he's going for the approach. He has a pretty good lead here. Yeah. My numbers playing a little bit impatient here and is getting punished for it. If you just were to chill on that platform, and he almost got sent off stage. He possibly would have gone into a down air footstool. Oh all because he approached. My numbers just could have possibly just stayed on that platform and not approached. Once again, he's doing it's, it again. It's even Mike Kirby, he's falling into Mike Kirby's grip. Grass as he, he takes falls the lead. into his stage. Yeah. Mike Kirby has him off stage, trying to catch with his neutral. Again. Numbers is off stage. Mike Kirby definitely trying to get oh, a goes trump. For the trump, and now he's lost stage control. This could actually be huge right now. Gets but, hit by that. Oh, oh my god. And Mike Kirby has the lead by a mere six percent. And there's John two numbers left on the clock. And what's the shame is that John Numbers threw that away. He was on the top platform as he goes back onto the stage. People in the venue are screaming as John Numbers tries to get back onto the oh. stage. He manages to side B onto that platform. Mike Kirby narrowly avoiding oh. death. He gets with jabbed. The jabs. Good people, calm down. It was just a jab. As Mike Kirby is <laughs> oh. air dodging, trying to get him with that final cutter oh spike. My God. He's taking a power Mike shield. Kirby gets a grab. What is he going to do? He's not going to land on that top platform. John Numbers is still in this. 
<laughs> just barely though. That back of his skin. Not sealing. John Numbers is living at 144 percent. Mike Kirby at 97. Oh, he's he's but I'm down to Kirby he has an awful situation here. He is off stage. <laughs> oh my God! This is so last hit. Grand Finals after a bracket. It's against the kid that kills it. him. John Numbers takes over Mike Kirby and John Numbers takes oh. Zeno. 30. Four. Oh my god, what an amazing finish. You saw Mike Kirby got that back air and you could see in his face like he thought he had it. He thought he had it and then like numbers manages to hang on and gets him with that. All he needed was that side B and with that much rage and that being on Dreamland, that was just it. That was it. That was it and that's all she wrote, man. Amazing stuff to both players. Uh, interviews? Interviews. I interview these guys all the time if you want to. Oh, yeah. Welcome to. All I'll, right. I'll do it for sure. Cool. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you appreciated the tourney stream today. If you guys like my commentary, you can follow me at Aussie La Vista. I'm also a streamer on Twitch.tv. I'll be streaming tomorrow and throughout the week if you guys want during the uh, day. Yeah. This guy, I love commentating with him. Uh, you can follow me at, at Rafael Safra. There you go. Uh, I am Salty Fun is my uh, gamer tag. Uh, so, yeah, you can, guys can give me a follow. Uh, but he'll still be saying on. He's going to interview the winner here, John Numbers. I am stepping off. See you guys later. Yes.